Alrighty, morning everybody. Uh, the cast time once again, and um, and to, once again, there's going to be some moving parts on this one, so there might be some mistakes, uh, especially considering that I have just now finished uploading all my videos. Um, I be, I, well here, let me uh, let me introduce this music here first. Um, this is going to be Sil Marl, uh, Thy Lonesome Journey, and uh, some. Dungeon synth, uh, this time from right here in the U.S. of A. Bit of a surprise. Usually, usually these dungeon synth albums, they come from damn near anywhere but here. So, so but anyway, let me go ahead and get that going. And this shouldn't be too loud. Yeah, I sound test. I just sound tested this. So, but anyway, like I said, um, I. I have just now finished up on uh, uploading all my videos. I basically I uploaded a total of six of them. Um, uh, three, three for Twitch, three for YouTube. Uh, I think one was my uh, new build in Gems of War. Um, and then uh, no wait a minute, five, five, make it five, sorry. But uh, but uh. Uh, one video for my Gems of War, my new build. Um, second one, uh, I did some, I played some Halloween themed pinball tables, pinball arcade. So those two are on YouTube. Um, and then those same two videos I uploaded to Twitch. And a third one was consisted of both Pinball FX3 and Pinball Arcade, the the full the full session. I can't uh, I can't upload the FX3 portion of that session to YouTube because um, it's got uh, some Star Wars tables and uh, Star Wars music is copyrighted music so it'll trip uh, YouTube's content ID sensor and end up copyright claiming the video so can't do that so yeah that was an all night project right there and uh, when I do upload them um, it uses up part of my computer's resources to do so so because of that, I can't really do a whole lot. I can't do much else. I mean, I mean, even even when playing uh, even when playing Gems of War, um, it still it still lags. I was getting lag spikes, getting lag spikes and stuff when I was playing it. So, but otherwise, um, I I made a video of this, but I did a little bit of a. It's called faction assault. It's a new type of mini game, but uh, one thing I didn't notice until later on that with every how can I call it? or what would be the easiest way to say this? The easiest floor, for lack of a better word, or with each floor you complete, it gets progressively harder and harder. Monsters get tougher and tougher. So it it got to a point where it 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 just wasn't happening. Um. Because even if I, uh, even if I got good RNG, made good decisions, got good drops, got good gem drops, it wasn't going to last forever. And again, I was at a level where the monster's health, the health and damage were so high that mistakes become more and more costly. Bad RNG becomes more and more costly because it got to where they were almost able to one-shot my group. So I ended up abandoning it like... I think I did maybe one, maybe two floors, and then I just called it off. It just wasn't happening. So, um, but, uh, otherwise, um, and whoops. That's one. All right, anyway, um, but for the pinball session, FX3 went okay. Um, just, but I wasn't on it very long, just long enough to do. Um, they're called mat. They're called matchups, where it's the equivalent of match play in golf, where your goal, you're trying, you're not, you're not trying to beat the high score. You're trying to beat a selected opponent's high score. Uh, beat that and move up in the rankings. Um, I just did one or two, just made the rounds on that. Uh, I created my own tournament and then just I called it off or I called it good 
went over to Pinball Arcade and just started playing off. I played some Halloween themed tables. Uh, Haunted House. Haunted House was one. Elvira and the Party Monsters was another table. Um, was Elvira Scared Stiff, also another one. And then Adam's Family. But uh, for the uh, for the most part on there, you guys probably saw it already. I was total and complete ass. I sucked. Um, in fact, um, normally what I do in that situation, but normally what I do in that situation, I have a little, I have a little short clip, a little short clip that uh, like or when I'm actually in the session and if it's going really bad, I just abandon the session, put this little clip of me going. And then ending the end of the session right there. But this time around, since for for lack of a better word, important, since this was a an important Halloween session, like a holiday that comes only once a year, um, I didn't do that. I just went ahead and uh, I just just deep six the attempt, and then just started over. On um, the second attempt, it went a little bit better. But not a whole lot. I think I did pretty good on, on Elvira and the Party Monsters. Um, I did okay on Scared Stiff. But I was trying to beat the Wizard Mode. But yeah, I came up empty. Uh, and then Adam's Family. I, was, I think I made it as far as a couple of multi-balls. But those typically aren't very hard to get. But otherwise, I, I was pretty much ass on that table too. Especially since that table doesn't have a ball save like at all. Oh, and um, I'm gonna, I'm taking a drink here. Um, I'm having a uh, Arizona green tea, the zero kind, uh, sugar-free. So, so all I can say to that is, better luck next week. But otherwise, um. But during during this time that I was spinning my wheels, I was also doing my also binge watching just Amoeba Records videos. It's basically it's um it's artists that I've never heard of buying music or showing showcasing their or it's called What's in My Bag. Like uh, these musicians are going around, they're buying records, tapes, CDs, whatnot, and then um then the uh, staff will have them have them have them sit on a couch. And they'll go on camera and stuff, uh, showing all the stuff they bought. A um, bit of it. It's a uh, just like the moon. I have my phases, and Amoeba Records is one of them. I'll watch a lot of it, but after a while, I'll just lose interest and go off and do something else. And and for some of these musicians, I do I do sense a tinge of narcissism. Part of it's understandable though, because Amoeba Records is the kind of place it usually sells a kind of kind of the kind of stuff that you really can't get anywhere else like they have they have a lot of rare records so I can understand them being a little bit arrogant about showing off what they got but aside from that um one thing I did notice kind of like yesterday's Portis head um I noticed that uh there's a whole lot of love for a guy named Leonard Cohen like a singer songwriter and um I only heard maybe one of his songs like a long time ago, something like, I'm your man. You know, he, he, he kind of sounded like a pedophile. You know, just, come in my van, it's free candy. Give me the ride to eternity. Oh yeah, I'm your man. You know, that kind of thing. You know, like, you know, the kind that has a van, you know, Free candy, that kind of thing. Just real creepy. Backed up. When I'm uh, making this cast, I I was listening to his uh like his debut album, like 1967. I still don't get it. I still don't get the appeal. But like I said yesterday, I don't hate the guy's music. I don't hate him. But you know, I mean, I mean, I would much rather listen to Leonard Cohen than like. Nickelback or Limp Biscuit, 
you know, or what's another one? Like, you know, or Shania Twain, or you know, you know that kind, you know, mainstream shit. I mean, so yeah, I would much rather listen to Leonard Cohen than that kind of crap, like the Eagles. No thanks. So, you know, yeah, I mean, but aside from that, though, I don't, the appeal is lost on me. And, um, and like yesterday, I goofed up. So, let me, it's kind of imperative I do this. So, working on it right now. You know, but on the other hand, though, um, I'm more of a I'm more of a Frank Zappa kind of person. You know, and um, I guess uh, you know, my all-time favorite band, like I said. Forgot to add this, but yeah, and then there, and this, and my all-time favorite album is uh, the Resonance commercial album, so I'm pretty sure if, uh, maybe less so on Frank Zappa, but I'm pretty sure if I played, if I played, uh, if I played my all-time favorite album, they'd probably be like, I don't get it. Joe, this album goes over my head, man. Um... You have any Crosby, Stills, and Nash, dude? So. So, yeah, it. I said this yesterday, too. Same planet, different worlds. So. But, I mean, it, it also is one of the reasons why I watch Amoeba Records. You know, just to see what else is out there. You know, what other kind of music that I, you know, there is to listen to. I don't, I don't know if I got into Dungeon Synth via Amoeba Records. I'm trying to think. Oh, um, I'm really racking my brain here right now. Um, I want to say yeah. I think there was one guy. I don't know who he was, but one of the album, one of the records that he got was uh, a guy named Mortis. He was like one of the original founders of uh, Dungeon Synth, and I remember. Uh, and I remember during the period of time that I was really into Norwegian black metal. Uh, one of the images that cropped up was, uh, well, since I gooped up once already, let me go ahead and pull him up. But like I said, um, I had, like I said, I had just now gotten started on uh, doing working on this cast so I didn't have a whole lot of time to prepare this I'll just grab this one okay good it's an image and not a web page so I'll Just give me a moment. But this guy here, Mortise, I remember seeing, I remember seeing various pictures of this guy. Like again, back when I was, uh, back when I was into Norwegian black metal, this guy came up. But I'm like, what the hell? Okay, I guess it's just another type of metal, and then, and then I think, um, I, I want to say it was on Amoeba Records. But one of the guys was actually showing off this album. I'm like, hmm, I've seen this before. I wonder. So I, I, I can't. I don't think I listened to his album right off the bat. But um, I think I probably looked him up on the wiki, and he's he said he was a the uh, wiki said he was a pioneer of dungeon synth, which is a genre I never even heard of in my life. So that's pretty much what got me into it. So you know, so like I was saying, it. 
So I, I guess, now that I think about it, uh, watching Amoeba Records is almost like playing Gems of War. Uh, it's like playing pinball. You know, sometimes you're the hammer, other times you're the nail. You know, that, you know, that kind of thing. You know, sometimes these... You know, sometimes these artists, they are... You know, it's like... It's like, they, you know, some of the... Some of the stuff they pick, I swear to God, they must do it. They must do it just to show off, you know? Yeah, yeah hi, I got this record. Hi, I got this record here. This guy, he composes in his whole entire his whole entire album consists of nothing but pots and pans and Pringles cans. <laughs> Look at me, I'm branching out. You know, that kind of thing. It just... You know, and not all of them. Not all of them, but it just... It's like some of them just picked the album. You, they seemingly do it just so they can show off how diverse they are. You know. I guess... Not that I'm not that I'm super cultured or anything, but you know, they're put, they're putting shit out that even I'm like, what the hell is that? And again, I'm the kind of guy that gets into, you know, and I'm the kind of you know, hell. You're listening to it right now, Dungeon Synth. You know, I'm you know my all-time favorite band, The Residents. You know, and even you know, and they're they're showing off showcasing these albums that even I'm like, what the fuck is that? You know. So, oh damn, this album's got metal too. I don't know that. Okay, I think there was another album that I played. I think it was either on my cast and/or my stream. But yeah, it was. Um, I kind of like these. It's a mixture of both dungeon synth and black metal. Okay. But yeah, I kind of like this. You're getting like the best of both worlds. It's kind of cool. I mean, this beat, it, it, I mean, if this were an instrumental, it'd be a plus, but not a requirement. this okay but unfortunately I have to cut it short um <clears throat> uh, but other but uh yeah um I've said all the things that I wanted to say this morning hopefully uh, but like I said this I didn't really have a whole lot of time to prepare this just given all this you know given all the stuff I had to do last night and this morning so so I'll just go ahead and kill it here um, thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. And this is going to be my last cast for the week. Because, um, starting tomorrow, I go back to work. Uh, it'll be Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Which means you probably won't be hearing from me again until Sunday morning. So, until then, though, thanks again for coming by, everybody. And see you all next time. Take care. <laughs>